What's going to happen to keto? Like seriously, okay, it's growing so fast that it's bound to pop, right? I mean, it's just like a housing bubble. It's like everything, it's going, getting so big and gaining so much momentum that it can't continue to grow like this forever. Like we can't expect the ketogenic state, the keto diet to just envelop every other kind of diet. The reality is, is that at some point, this is going to pop. And that's hard for a lot of people to understand. That's hard for a lot of companies to comprehend where everyone's jumping on the keto bandwagon, creating keto products and keto foods and keto this and keto that. I'm not saying that that's wrong, but there definitely needs to be an awareness of the fact that we are living in a keto bubble right now. Everywhere you turn, you see keto. You go through the checkout line at Whole Foods, you see keto magazines. You see this stuff out there. Now on one hand, that's really good, but on another hand, that's terrible. Now I was recently at Natural Products Expo West, which for those of you that are familiar with the industry know that this is like where everyone showcases their new food products or their new supplements, everything like that. It's a huge event down in Anaheim. The amount of keto products that were there, it was just mind blowing. It really dawned on me at that point in time that we are in a keto bubble. And as someone that is known as the keto guy, this is something that I definitely feel like I need to talk about because I am not just a keto guy. If you watch my videos, you know that I'm all about targeted ketogenic diets. I'm talking about fat adaptation, fasting, carb cycling at specific times. Keto is just the way that I lost a bunch of weight, so I earned a lot of credibility there. The reality is, let's talk about what's gonna happen with this keto bubble. You are tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. New videos every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time, and a bunch of videos throughout the week as well. So hit that little subscribe button, but then hit that little bell icon. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow you to turn on notifications. You'll know whenever I go live, or post a new video. Also make sure you check out Thrive Market down in the description so you can get all your groceries literally delivered right to your doorstep without ever having to set foot in a grocery store. And I've been able to create my own fasting box, my own keto box, and you name it. So go ahead and check them out down in the description below to get your hands on some groceries cheaper than the grocery store. Now let's get into some little bit of food and economic talk. So a lot of the trends are showing that keto is gonna grow by about 5% year over year. Now, that's if you look at basic trends. I don't think that's really looking at the actual mindset. Okay, the reality is keto's aggressive, right? Even the name keto is aggressive. It, it sort of has this feel to it where it's only for zealots or it's for the uh, keto police, right? Like we always think that just like keto, it's aggressive. Even those that are doing keto, it doesn't have a friendly name. So I don't ever think that we're going to be able to get a vast majority of the population to do keto. And that's exactly where we are wrong. So how do we prevent the keto bubble from bursting and just ruining everything that we've worked for in terms of research, in terms of science, in terms of content, in terms of products? Like, how do we control this? Okay, the fact is we need to start looking at keto as a state shift and a mind shift, right? One thing that has come from the prevalence of the ketogenic diet, ketogenic foods, is the awareness of what is on a label. Okay, so keto's gonna blow up at some point. It's going to reach a point where it has a line of diminishing return and it's gonna settle back into low carb, it's gonna settle back into something where people are just maybe aware of their carbs. But that's just the thing. You see, the keto bubble is actually going to be something that helps us as a society. Take a look at this. Okay, we were in a little bit of a low fat bubble for a while, right? And what did that low fat, higher carb or moderate carb bubble do for us? Well, it brought awareness to things that we weren't aware of before. Now, I will go out and say that the cholesterol myth was definitely something that we shouldn't be taking to heart, but it did make us aware of our lipid profiles. It did make us aware of atherosclerosis to a different degree. It didn't make us, so, so we can't be getting upset with fads. We can't be getting upset with bubbles. We have to learn from them. So what's going to happen in two, three, four, five years when the keto bubble starts to pop and people aren't talking about keto anymore. What's gonna happen? The reality is we already are making the impact. You see, I'm not saying that everyone needs to go keto, not by any stretch of imagination. And if you're not a subscriber of my channel, then you should know that I'm not a keto zealot. That's not the way it works. But the reality is that we have changed the way that we look at a label now. Every person that I talk to that has heard of the keto diet, at least now consciously looks at a label and looks at the carb content. They look at the fiber content. They look at the fat content. So we have stopped the demonization of fats. We haven't quite created a demonization of carbs, and I hope that we don't, and that's what some of the companies that are doing it wrong are doing, and that's not the way at all. We shouldn't demonize carbs. But by actually taking the fats out of that demonized light, we can realize that, wow, 
we can make a big difference in how we live and actually improve longevity. So the whole world is going to change in a positive way and that's all we could ever ask for. So we have to ride the curtails of sort of this overall fad, right? Just like we had to ride the coattails of the low fat fad in order to learn about lipids and to learn about HDL and LDL and VLDL. Sure, a lot of that stuff's getting debunked, but a lot of the stuff still stands, okay? A lot of the fat science still stands, but now we're just evolving that science where it's not necessarily the fats that are bad, it's the fats in conjunction with inflammation and yada yada. So it's a natural evolution. So when you look at economics in general, when you have a bubble that bursts, it does come back. We have inflation, we have other things that are contributing factors. The reality is when we look at the keto market, what's going wrong right now is everybody is jumping on it, right? And what's happening when everybody's jumping on it is it's desensitizing people to it. So I'm not doing this video to encourage people to stop coming out with keto products, but the issue is that there's no differentiation between these products, right? So we're already in a subset of the health and diet industry, okay? Keto, no matter what you think, is still a small subset of the health and diet industry. So what's going on is in a vastly unresearched world, which is the keto world, it's researched, but not as researched as the rest of the diet world, right? We've got this relatively unresearched world where we have products piling in and piling in and piling in, but there's not enough research to support any kind of differentiation. So this lack of differentiation is making it so that it just looks like we have this bubble of the same products and everyone's getting desensitized to it, okay? When you look at health as a whole, there's products that can go over here, there's products that can go here, there's products for fitness people, there's products for women, there's products for men, there's products for this. It's too small of a subset to try to go niched inside of keto right now. Like, if you were to try to market a product for keto fitness or just for keto women, you could probably survive, but you're not gonna be able to grow the way that you wanna grow. There's an old saying that says there's riches in niches, but the hard part is that today's day and age, it's really hard to market to a niche without having a lot of money. So when these organizations come in and they create a bunch of keto products, we're just creating a problem. So I'm not gonna name names, but when I was at Natural Products Expo West, I came across a product, right? Okay, so hear me out on this. This is what turned me on to all this and made me think of this. I knew there was a problem when I saw this. A product that was marketed as keto, and I look at it, and there was 27 grams of carbs and nine grams of fat. And I asked the person at the booth what made it keto, and they said, because it was high fat. That is how I know that keto is becoming a problem. We're not talking about keto anymore. We're talking about how we can make money. And that's where the problem lies. So whether you are keto or not, we still have to be keeping cognizant of this. The keto bubble is going to burst. And if I could look at my crystal ball, here's what's gonna happen. In three, four years, maybe even a little bit less, things are going to pop and we're gonna settle into low carb. We're going to realize that we discovered erythritol and stevia are great alternatives to sweeteners. We're gonna discover that fiber plays a role. We're gonna discover all these different things, but we're definitely not going to end up banking on keto as the long haul. So why does this sound so crazy coming from Thomas? I mean, it's, it's why am I saying this? The reality is that we always need to be able to keep keto as a tool because going deep in keto is going to elicit a powerful response and I don't think that we're ever going to be able to get the mainstream community to completely come on board with keto. But if we can use keto to our advantage at specific times, then obviously it's a win. So the ultimate goal here is we're changing the way people look at food. And if we change the way that people look at food, we're gonna have a trickle down effect that's gonna affect all of us in a positive way. So sure, we're in a bubble, sure, maybe it's a fad, maybe it's not. The reality is no one looks at a label the exact same, okay? Food marketing doesn't, people don't when they shop, Grocers don't, you name it, it's all different. The other thing I wanna to touch on before I end this video is the world of food marketing briefly. Okay, everything is about hyper palatability. Everything is about trying to create something that tastes so good that people get addicted to it. Even the food packaging that we look at, Doritos, things like that, bright colors that impact us, right? Simple food marketing. The reality is we're starting to go down that road with keto. So what does that really mean? Well, it means like when we see bright colored packaging for keto, we see the typical like Nabisco style advertising and marketing with keto, we get angry. Like those in the keto world get angry. Be like, oh, it's getting commercialized. It's this. Well, it's not getting commercialized. Okay, take it with a grain of salt because those companies that are normally marketing things like Doritos, these bright colors, they are seeing keto 
as a new way. They're able to actually take these bright colors, they're able to take this hyper palatability, this sweet taste, and they're trying to make it appeal to the mainstream. So they're actually doing us a service. What's not helping us out is every single Paul, Joe, and Harry coming out with a keto product that's not going to really do anything, right? We need the bigger names to actually come in and promote keto. And I know that sounds crazy because that's like, why would we ever want big corporations to promote keto? But if they do, it's going to generalize it and it's gonna flatten that bubble out. Because these bubbles are being created by smaller industry and by smaller companies coming in and artificially inflating this with Facebook traffic and YouTube traffic and you name it. And they might be able to scrape a few dollars and do some smash and grab, but they're not gonna be able to actually make an impact on society. We actually need the corporations to lean on this. So anyway, that's a topic for another day. But the reality is keto as a fad or as a bubble is not here to stay. We can't expect it to pop or at least decline at some point. So is it the best market to get in? Eh, maybe for some short term, but the reality is we have to look at the big picture and what we're trying to achieve. Keto is good, keto is powerful, but is it going to be for everybody all the time? Of course not. So anyway, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel. And if you like more of these style of videos, just let me know. Put it down in the comment section below and I'll give you my thoughts. See you soon.